because this is true crime, it is sensitive material and should only be shown to an appropriate audience. So the missing 411 continues. I love, um, I love Mr. David Polites. He's amazing and does a fantastic job of writing to kind of connect the dots of very strange occurrences from to today with missing children. We're going to be doing, um, see, this is Idaho.
which is a very rough region of the mountain. In an unusual development, searchers found traces of Larry in an interesting place. It is outlined in the May 30th, 1966 article in the Nevada
So something had to have taken him, right? I don't know.
and screaming his name throughout the night. Searchers walked nearly hand in hand throughout the area and never saw or heard the boy. A radar station was being built at the summit of Cottonwood Butte, an elevation of 5,400 feet. At the base of the butte, the area where the huckleberry picking was happening was 4,700 feet. Later in the Spokane Daily article and this description of where Richard was found, the area was found is in the heavy heavily timbered and rocky slopes of Cottonwood Butte, near where the government soon will construct a directional radar. It is covered with down timber, making the work of the searchers very difficult, unquote. This definition of where Robert was found near the summit, meaning he managed. This is probably the strangest part. To climb nearly 700 feet up the side of a butte through huge downed trees. He was eventually found pinned between the branches of a so tight he could not get himself out. Could a two-year-old boy have get himself even over such a large down tree or trees for 700 feet. So up several hundred feet in elevation and then pinned himself among small branches so tightly that he could not move. Could a two-year-old boy be that strong? So he thinks it's very fascinating that one article indicated that he was wearing bright colored clothing, that he could not explain what happened to him. This incident occurred very close to the Idaho, Washington, and Oregon borders, an area where many have disappeared and where there is an identified cluster. So that is a very interesting story. And all of these are very interesting because they do really point to the fact that, like, something is out there. Something. I mean, this tiny little boy. Here is another one, and it seems to happen more often than not to little boys. I don't know why. I've been asking myself every time I read to one of his books, I think. Either if the girls are caught, there is more of a chance that they survive. I don't know why. Does anybody else find that strange? So Joshua Lewis Kern, missing since 7-13-1990 at 6 p.m. at the Harmon State Park in Idaho. Age of disappearance is two years old. He's only two years old. Armand State Park is located 10 miles west of the Wyoming border, six miles south of Island Park, and sits in the middle of several bodies of water. It is just two miles south east of Island Park Reservoir, and is almost next to Silver. Stone 
parents it's not just them it was the entire family probably I'm you know from one side you, know, you get together with hundreds of people or 50 people at least I remember going to them as a kid so the Kearns lost sight of their son Joshua and soon realized that they could not locate locate him at all inside of two hours there were over 150 searchers looking for the two year old boy a helicopter equipped with FLIR was requested from the Idaho National Engineering Laboratory along with multiple canine search teams so this is a very large search very quickly with a lot of high tech equipment. The Fremont County Sheriff was leading the search for the boy. Yet soon after Joshua vanished, the weather changed again. Here we go with the weather. Drastically, a steady, heavy rain hit the area. So this is a main theme we find in a lot of these. Not all of them, but in a lot of these, the weather will change almost immediately after the child vanishes. Um, and continued through the following day, almost preventing, you know, the, the searchers or anybody to find or locate the child. The Kearns were staying at the park's dormitory and maintained vigilance while partaking in the search. A July 14th article in the Chronicle Telegram explained what happened on that day's search. Quote, a two-year-old boy missing 18 hours in heavy timber country steady rain was found safe and apparently unharmed Friday afternoon. The Fremont County Sheriff stated, unquote, the boy had evaded dogs, ground searchers, aerial um, reconnaissance, Ah. 
Joshua. And they had searched that exact area for Joshua and did not find him. That's another common theme, is that they'll walk right over many times that exact area where the child is eventually found. Either
readers should take note of something important. Lawrence, no. Exactly where his uncle was at. So he knew where his uncle had been, right? He looked at him and waved. The boy knew. The boy knew what direction to walk to find him in. So the fact that he just disappeared is very strange. The area where Lawrence vanished is very rugged in parts, and he vanished in a valley surrounded by steep mountains. Searchers from Donovan, Manhattan, and Round Mountain, along with the sheriff's deputies and soldiers, all assisted in the efforts to find Lawrence. Searchers initially Same Reno Evening is 
said, article and the following, quote, the final dash was up a steep, narrow draw, extending a few hundred yards from the main cabin. Joe Clifford was leading in the finishing sprint. The art, unquote, the article has further descriptions about the dangers of the area and then finishes as follows.
saying 9, 14, 1944, 6 miles south of Reno, Nevada. The incident is centered on a famous dude ranch 6 miles south of Reno, Nevada. The Del Monte Dude Ranch was a location where the wealthy vacationed. Yes. 
sweet disappeared. Sheriff Rayroot, formerly called off the search, he stated he was positive that Sylvia did not drown and she was not in any of the creeks, ponds, or water sources anywhere in the area. The sheriff also stated that he did not believe that Sylvia wasn't
always.